Good day. Uh, in this session, we will address the issue of uh, communication. Learning objectives in this particular session would be the importance of communication, upward and downward communication, basic managerial communication tasks, and uh, management information system. In uh, strategy, in the whole process of uh, strategy, uh, in the earlier sessions, we have been looking at uh, strategy formulation and uh, strategy selection. We are now moving on to strategy implementation. Uh, as they say, uh, genius is 10% uh, um, inspiration and 90% uh, perspiration. So, implementation of strategy is a very critical part of the strategy process. Communication is one of the important elements in strategy implementation. Let's begin by looking at uh, the uh, kind of information which uh, the management of an organization wants. After all, communication is about information, right? Therefore, let's begin with this process. Now, the management functions, the purpose of each management function, and the type of information required by each management function, that will be the focus of our um, approach. Let's begin with uh, planning. Planning is the, the basis of all management functions. Uh, the purpose of planning is to establish objectives and strategies. The kind of information required for this are 1. The expectations of stakeholders. You will recall that the company has a number of stakeholders, often with very different um, interests. Therefore, expectations of stakeholders is a very critical input. The second is data regarding the external environment. And the third is data regarding the internal environment of the company. So, these are the kinds of data required, the, the kinds of information required to, for management to perform the planning function. Let's look at the second function, which uh, management uh, takes care of. This is the control function. The purpose of this function is to establish the degree of achievement of activities. After all, in the planning function, various activities are laid out. And in the control function, the achievement of these activities is measured. So. The kind of information required for this is feedback information, right? Okay, let's move to the third. That's decision making. Decision making is a critical part, a critical function of uh, management. Now, for decision making, the, the purpose of decision making is, after all, to identify problems and um, to select solutions to those problems. Right? Therefore, the kind of information required for this is expertise. Right? This is different from the kinds of information we have seen earlier. Expertise is a very different kind of information. Okay? Then let's go on to the fourth function of management, which is coordinating. There are several kinds of activities being performed by several kinds of people. Therefore, the entire thing needs to be coordinated. What is the purpose of coordination? To avoid gaps. To avoid gaps between activities. And what is the type of information required for this? Feedback. We have seen feedback information earlier. So, let's look at organizing. The organizing function is a question of who does what, right? which is again something which management uh, prescribes. What is the type of information required for this? One, 
the nature of the task, of course. And second, what are the skills of the staff, right? So with this information, management is able to perform this function, the function of organizing. And the last management function is commanding, right? Commanding, getting the job done. Here, the purpose of this job is motivation, ensuring that the job gets done, ensuring that people are sufficiently motivated to perform the job. And what is the kind of information required here? Very different from the earlier kinds of information. This is information regarding the needs and expectations of employees. After all, no person will do a task unless he is convinced it meets his need, unless he is convinced that it is helping him achieve his expectations in one way or the other. Right? So, understanding the needs and expectations of employees is the information that management requires to perform the commanding function. So, what we have seen uh, so far is the kind of information that management requires to perform its tasks in the company. Let's now look at the kind of information that employees need to uh, perform their tasks. Right? Okay. Now, the first thing is employees need to perform their tasks effectively and efficiently. Now, you will recall in one of the earlier uh, sessions, we had drawn a distinction between effectiveness and efficiency. Right? Effectiveness in addition to effectiveness, economy, and so effectiveness plus economy together constitute efficiency. Right? Now, to perform the task effectively, the uh, employee needs to know what is the purpose of the task. Right? That is the kind of information the employee needs. The employee needs to know the bigger picture. Right? It's not enough if the employee is told that um, let's assemble this, uh, all these uh, components to create uh, an engine, right? The employee needs to be told what is the importance of the engine in that particular kind of vehicle, right? The engine is always important in every kind of vehicle, but in certain kinds of vehicles, the criticality of the engine is more important because of the nature of the function. This needs to be explained to the employee. Now, let's look at the uh, second uh, uh, kind of information that employees require. This is the information for learning and development. No employee will continue in an organization if he finds that he is not improving his own professional profile, which means he needs to learn, he needs to develop himself, he needs to develop himself professionally and personally. Now, for this, he requires certain kinds of information. He needs to be told what is the response of various kinds of products the company has made. He needs to be told what are the changes taking place in customer expectations. He needs to be told about competitive moves. Right? So, all these kinds of information will enhance the role of the employee. This is learning and development. The third kind of information that the employee requires is information which will give him job satisfaction. Now, this is quite distinct from the earlier two kinds of information. Job How will he get job satisfaction? Job satisfaction is, after all, a question of the employee being convinced that he has achieved a purpose. Right? Now, if the employee is told that the company has achieved the number one rank in a particular market segment, this is the kind of information which will give the employee great job satisfaction because he realizes 
that what he has done has contributed to the organization's purpose. So, employees require three kinds of information. Information to perform tasks, information for learning and development, and uh, information for job satisfaction. 